Ghost and spoke in tongues because it just says that he was converted and blind knocked off his horse. He rose up and was baptized. Well, as we read later on in the book of Corinthians, we'll see Paul did receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because he tells the believers at the church of Corinthians, I thank God that I pray in tongues more than you all. Hmm. Now, let's go here. Chapter 19. Here is Paul going to preach, or I'm sorry, not preach. He's going to meet with Apollos. Because at this time, Apollos was a very charismatic speaker who had just enough knowledge to preach a good gospel, but he lacked in-depth understanding about the doctrine. So you have many preachers out there that might get out there and they'll speak and they'll preach and teach and all that stuff, and they give you great fundamentals, but when it comes down to some deep doctrinal concepts, maybe they don't have it all. So all God does is sends people to them to build upon what they already have. So Paul is going to deal with the apostle Apollos at the time and expound upon what he's already learned. But on his way, he runs into some believers. Now, many out there will say, well, I go to a church where all you have to do is just say, I believe in Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Some churches will say all you have to do is be water baptized. Some churches will say all you have to do is repent, be water baptized, and accept Christ and confess your sins, and it's a wrap. You automatically have the Holy Ghost. All of these different theories concerning baptism of the Holy Spirit and what it all entails in salvation. But we got a great scripture here that breaks this down in the book of Acts chapter 19. It says, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? Now wait a minute. Just wait a minute. If you automatically have the Holy Ghost when you believe, why is he asking this question? Hmm. So he says, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much heard, rather there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance. So we know then that these people had repented also. Hmm. It says, Saying unto the people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is, on Jesus Christ Jesus. So we know these men had believed in Jesus Christ. We know that they had been water baptized. And it says in verse 5, When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all of the men were about twelve. Once again, it shows here that just because you say, I believe in Jesus, just because you say, oh, I've repented of my sins, just because you're water baptized, doesn't necessarily mean that you've been spiritually born again or illuminated. Okay? And so Paul, knowing that, didn't tear down the foundation that was built concerning the doctrine of Jesus Christ, but he expounded upon it. He told them that not only is it good that you believe and you're water baptized and you've repented, but you also must be born again. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. And when they understood this, they didn't debate like modern people. Oh, God, why do we have to speak in tongues? They're so wicked, nasty, and icky. No, they simply said, let's get it. Paul laid his hands on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Okay, now, let's jump out of the book of Acts, because I know what everyone's thinking probably. Like, oh, well, all you Pentecostals, all you do is just dibble and dabble in the book of Acts. What about the book of Corinthians? All right, let's go to the book of Corinthians and see what Paul says about speaking in tongues in the book of Corinthians. All right. Now, by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Uh, my email is Kevin Ellerby, E L L E R B E 32 at yahoo.com. With any of your questions or comments and for speaking engagements, you can also in, uh, email me there too. I'll be happy to come and talk. I do talk about other things besides just speaking in tongues, okay? There's a lot of other stuff you can look at on the internet. All right. Now, let's go to, first of all, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles, carried away from the dumb idols, even uh, as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord by the, but by the Holy Ghost. So now, first thing you have to understand is we need the Holy Ghost. All right? 
uh, to even really understand Jesus' lordship here. But it says, no man can say that he is Lord except by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diverse or diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. Now, notice he says gifts. He's dealing with gifts, okay? All right? Understand this. The Holy Ghost is the gift that gives gifts. Uh, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the gift that gives gifts, okay? So, it says, and there are diverse, uh, uh, I'm sorry, there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but in the same God, which worketh in all, I mean, worketh all in all. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. It says, for to one is given by the Spirit of the Word of Wisdom. So he's talking about the differences of, the, of, of gifts. Wisdom is one of them. To another, the Word of Knowledge by the same Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit. So some people have the gift of knowledge. To others, faith by the same Spirit. Now, let me just stop you for a second. A lot of people say, well, what is the difference between praying in tongues and the gift of tongues? Well, there's a big difference. For example, I pray in tongues, but I don't have the gift of tongues. Now, it would be equivalent to me being a Christian. I'm a Christian, thus I have faith, but I don't mean I have the gift of faith, okay? So there are people out there, every Christian to be saved must have faith. But it shows here that some Christians acquire the gift of faith. Just like every Christian that is born again prays in tongues is the initial evidence. But it doesn't mean that they have the gift of tongues. I can give you countless people out there that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues, but they don't claim to have the gift of tongues. I know several that have the gift of tongues, and it is different, and we'll cover that. It says, to another faith by the same spirit. To, a, to uh, another, the gift of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, uh, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Now we're talking about speaking in tongues to edify the church, the gift of tongues. Thus, you also have someone that has the gift of interpretation. But all of these work it that one of the same spirit, I mean self-same spirit, dividing to every man, somebody being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we, are, we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. All right, now, I think in this particular particular, uh, oh wait, let's skip that, let's skip that because they do talk about tongues again and that's what I want to do. I didn't want to read this whole thing but I want to get down to where they talk about tongues again. Okay, since that's the controversy here. Alright, uh, he jumps back into dealing with the tongues down here in verse 29. It says, uh, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gift of healing, do all speak with tongues, do all interpret? And when he, when he asked this question, I would be the first to tell you no. I mean, heck, you know, I'm a preacher, I'm a teacher, but I don't have the gift of healing. You know, there are certain gifts that I have. One thing I can say is I pray in tongues, but I don't have the gift of tongues. Right here, he's dealing with the gifts, the multiple gifts in the church. He is not dealing with receiving the Holy Spirit. He is not dealing with praying in tongues as it edifies or builds individuals up. He is dealing with these gifts that are designed to benefit the whole church. So when he asked this question, and people would take that one scripture and say, do all speak in tongues? And then people say, no, absolutely not. I would agree with them. No, because in this context, when he says speak in tongues, he's talking about the gifts. So no. All does not have to give. Because if everyone had the gift of tongues, all those believers in the book of Acts that we just went over, all of them received the same gift. That means the church would be lopsided. That would be equivalent to having a church with all preachers. Or a church that has all deacons. A church and everybody has the gift of healing. What about the sick man? You don't need to lay hands on nobody. Just lay hands on yourself if everybody got the gift of healing. That's what I'm But anyway, you know. So... Here it is. It says, do all interpret. So the Bible here is talking about all of these different gifts, okay? It is not talking about praying in tongues as it refers.